I've been given clear writing instructions from the chairman of our session. Uh, I've been told to uh, keep it short and to be controversial. <laughs> Both of these things are difficult for a civil servant. Um, but the best I can promise is that I'll try and keep it short. Um, I'm conscious that the Minister for Finance is going to give a uh, closing speech later this afternoon. So uh, rather than uh, go over some of the same ground that he's going to cover, I, I decided to sort of come at this whole issue of competitiveness from perhaps a, a different perspective. So I'd like to talk about four things, um, evidence-based policy making, um, our approach to stakeholder engagement, um, and then to focus on a recent case study of that, um, the BEPS consultation that we ran earlier this year, and the ultimate product that came out of that in the recent budget, which was the roadmap for, for ta tax competitiveness. So one of the things we're, we're very focused on in the Department of Finance is to try wherever possible to have um, economic and statistical evidence to inform uh, the policy making process. So in the recent budget we published uh, seven separate pieces of uh, economic analysis relating to the whole issue of the competitiveness of our corporate tax regime. And all of these publications were, were published on budget day. Um, and they very much have informed uh, the policy approach that we've taken in the budget, um, and in particular in relation to the development of the roadmap for tax competitiveness. Rather than go into each of them in, in any detail, um, I would just highlight a couple. Uh, we published a piece of research which we commissioned from the Economic and Social Research Institute, which uh, for the first time um, used empirical evidence uh, using the Amadeus uh, database of company information to try and assess what the impact uh, on foreign direct investment into Ireland would have been if we had had a higher rate of corporation tax applying to Ireland over uh, approximately the last eight years or so. And um, the SRI modelled the, uh, the implications that this would have had in terms of investor decisions and the results really were, were, were very significant. They showed, uh, broadly speaking, if Ireland had have had the average corporation tax rate applying across the European Union, the level of new foreign direct investment projects into Ireland would have been uh, approximately 50% lower than what they actually have been. Um, so that was a, a very interesting piece of empirical research uh, which we published on Budget Day. We um, also, as part of the budget, looked at the whole relationship between the foreign direct investment sector and the wider Irish economy. And we, we published uh, a paper on Budget Day related to that. And again, I think on the one hand, it shows the very positive contribution that the foreign direct investment sector is making to the Irish economy, but it also points to some challenges, um, particularly perhaps the need for better links to be developed between the indigenous parts of the economy and, and the foreign direct investment sector. So um, I, I very much uh, encourage people to, to look at some of the research that we published on Budget Day. Um, as well as our focus on evidence-based policy making, we um, uh, also published on Budget Day a specific report on tax expenditures, which is something which um, is increasingly uh, the subject of a lot of public commentary. And for the first time, we have now published guidelines for how tax expenditures should be evaluated on an ongoing basis. Um, we've circulated these guidelines uh, across government departments, and we very much hope that going forward, uh, tax expenditure schemes will be evaluated using these guidelines. And where they're not found to be making a positive contribution, then those particular mm. expenditures will be wound down. Um, this is a, a photograph uh, of um, the Department of Finance in the 1920s, um, when uh, supposedly at the time, uh, policymakers were deciding the budgetary process. And I suppose for many people uh, who perhaps criticize our approach to, to uh, policymaking and the budgetary process, 
uh, this is what can, can often be brought to mind, the idea of uh, men, and it is generally men, uh, sitting around a table in a closed room um, deciding on policy issues. If that ever was the case in the past, um, certainly in my view it's not the case right now, um, increasingly uh, the department is seeking to involve stakeholders wherever possible in terms of uh, the policy making process. Um, and for example, uh, earlier this year we published a public consultation paper on the whole OECD uh, base erosion and profit shifting project and invited uh, comments and contributions from uh, a wide range of stakeholders, indeed anyone, um, in relation to how they felt Ireland should respond to the BEPS process. Um, and this is only one example of uh, the public consultation processes that we're now engaged in in the tax policy area. Over the last year we've carried out seven separate uh, tax policy consultations and we're very much committed to continuing uh, that mechanism as a way of engaging people in the tax policy making process. Um, that's not all we're doing. We're also uh, trying to engage with stakeholders in different ways. And for example, we recently held our second annual tax policy conference. Um, we uh, are very much opening up recruitment within both the Department of Finance and, and the wider uh, civil service. And we're also encouraging more and more secondments into and out of the department. Uh, as well as that, we recently announced a new collaborative research partnership with the Economic and Social Research Institute, which over the next two years will have a particular focus on developing and publishing tax policy research. Um, so in the, the, the BEPS consultation that we ran earlier this year, what was really encouraging for me was that we had a very wide range of stakeholder engagement. It wasn't just um, the, the, uh, the multinational sector, although you know, their contribution was incredibly useful, important and welcome, but it was also a much broader range of stakeholders who engaged in the process. Uh, including civil society, academics, and even some political parties. Um, and from our, from our perspective, uh, open public consultation is a great way to democratize uh, the policy-making process and enable all people from all sectors of society to contribute to the policy-making debate. Um, the ultimate product from all of that was the roadmap for tax competitiveness, which we published with the budget, and which we feel um, sets a clear, certain uh, uh, road, I suppose, for how our, uh, um, how our uh, what can I say, um, tax competitiveness can be framed in terms of the developing uh, international debate on the subject. Um, it was a, a ten-point roadmap. Um, you know, many of you will be f familiar with the various action points in it, but I think what was really important was a lot of it, you know, nearly all of it, came from the stakeholder consultation process that we ran. Um, a number of the issues that were raised as part of the stakeholder process were not surprising to us. Uh, for example, um, the uh, desire among some to see us uh, enhance the R&D tax credit regime or the SARP regime. But, but some, uh, some issues that were raised as part of the process were a surprise. For example, the call for increased uh, resources for the competent authority for revenue, for example. Um, so I think the, the roadmap which was published on Budget Day is a very concrete example of how uh, important and useful and powerful the, uh, the open uh, stakeholder engagement process that we're now involved in can be, and hopefully, uh, all of this will lead to Ireland being far more competitive in, in an increasingly uh, uh, fractious global environment. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Carl.